Okay, so now it's time to put our quilt top on the frame and this is my quilt top. I've taken the bulk of the uh, quilt top and I've put it over top of my frame. So my quilt top is actually down across that way and all the fabric is nice and straight and flat so that when I roll it onto this roller, I won't have any shifts because of uh, weight distribution of fabric bunching up over there or bunching up over here. So it's gonna go on to this bar here, I have put a pin uh, in the center of the bottom of my top. Uh, the right side is up, obviously, on this one. And this is the um, center point of my front leader. So there's my pin, and I'm going to get a couple of uh, clips. In there and just like the backing fabric I'm just going to go across and make sure everything is loading nice and straight. Um, another thing that I do when I have a quilt like this that has sashing I'm, all, I'm also watching just the lines any kind of lines that are going across just to see that they're all you know maybe the um, the border was a little bit wonky but if I have a sashing coming across this way you just have to make judgment calls as to which is the best way to load it. So this quilt was uh, quilted really well so it was all going on really really nice. I don't see any issues at all. So now it's time to start putting on the larger leaders. So I'm going to start right about here so I cover the end of the fabric. It's well covered. And I'm just going to start working it on. Take off my mini clip. So when you're first learning how to use leader grips, you might find this a little awkward because the, the leader can flop down with the leader, uh, the leader tube inside. So you can um, help with that just by clamping your, um, your clamps, your quilt clamps, just to the end, just to keep that in place. But it doesn't really bother me, so I just, I got used to it, so I just work with it. adjust this a little bit so you can see how easy all I had to do was just pull it off put it back down again on the next one Okay, so now I'm going to roll my top onto uh, this bar here, and uh, again I'm going to watch. Now it, sometimes it gets a little bit uh, hard to move the fabric because of the friction against the, the backing. So I might just take a little slack off, still try to lay it so that it's laying straight. You never stop watching how it's loading. You're always wanting everything to be straight, straight of grain, everything looking like it's grain the way it should. I'm just checking. Is 
going on really good. Okay, so I have my uh, top now all the way rolled onto my front bar and I've stopped it uh, just up here. This is a pretty good distance for me. This is going to be custom quilted so I did have to bring my leader grip up a bit. So once you're happy with the way it looks uh, at this stage, then you have to bring it back. I'm going to be bringing it back over this front bar because I have to put my, my batting in next. So I'm just putting my batting in here. I'm using a, a wool batting. I'm, I'm really uh, been using the wool batting. This is by Hobbs quite a bit lately. I think it's uh, it gives you really, really nice definition in your quilting and it's got enough loft that you're gonna get enough um, area to um, bury your stitch. If, you're, if your batting is too thin, like some of the 100% cottons, I don't use those too much. It's too flat and you don't get enough area um, to sink your stitch. So that's either you're either gonna have too tight of a stitch on the top or too tight of a stitch on the back. So you want something that where your, your stitch can actually sink in and make a good stitch and that equates to good tension. I'm just gonna put this in here. And even though it's uh, wool, it's actually very light. I was quite surprised by it when I got it. Just like fabric, you're just flattening it out, making sure there's no um, no wrinkles. If you see any threads that need to come off, now is the time to get those off because they can show through on your white fabric. Okay, so uh, we're almost done. Um, I've got my quilt top nice and flat and I'm really liking the way everything is laying against the batting. I don't have uh, any issues with ripples or too much fabric anywhere. So this has gone on really, really good. So this is the only time I do use pins. I use pins to um, secure the fabric down to the batting in the back. And I'm going down about an inch and a half to two inches because my, uh, when I sew, when I base this down, the hopping foot needs to be along the edge inside of the area where the binding is gonna go. Just a few, just to secure it down so it doesn't move while you're stitching. This looks pretty good. And I also just, I like to do uh, another check that I didn't mention before. I like to just look at it uh, along this edge here and uh, against the edge of my leader. Just again, just one more last check just to make sure everything looks nice and straight and this looks really good. So all I have left to do is base down the top. And for a stitch length, I'm going to use, uh, I've got five stitches per inch on here right now. So that's pretty good. You don't want anything that's too big, or I should say too small, because if you do have to pick it out for whatever reason, uh, this applies to when you're basting down the sides as well. If you have something that's too tight, it's, uh, it's not gonna be fun to pick out if you need to pick it out. So five is pretty good. You can even do it larger than that if you want, I've seen. So I'm just gonna pick up my bobbin thread. And I always want to be very careful when you're doing this because I, I do have my fingers on either side of the hopping foot. I have sewn through my finger, had to go to the hospital and it didn't uh, feel too good. It hurt really bad. So always be careful when you're uh, stitching. It's only 
it happened to me once and I hope that's it. across the top I can take my pins out and uh, I'm going to base down the side. Some people don't base down the side. I've heard of people that only pin because as you're quilting um, a couple of things can happen. If you do a lot of quilting you can either like push you can either push fabric out and then you end up with like a little bubble or um, what happens with me is that when as you're quilting the quilt top actually contracts so it can it can pull away so I like to do stitching because if I just have pins uh, the fabric can actually move back along the pin and I don't want that I want it to be stable right along this edge so I do um, base down but again I'm using a really large stitch so it's very easy to pick out if I need to so I won't end my thread here I'll just continue down if you feel comfortable putting pins in here, you know, no problem. That's a great idea. But this is uh, this is staying in place really good. And so the last thing I would have to do is uh, base down my left hand side. So I hope this video has been uh, worthwhile you enduring how long it took me to put together uh, can be a little tedious if you're uh, if you know about this kind of thing but if you're learning I remember it well that I was looking at any kind of video I could online and uh, I just thought this was an important thing to do especially for my Innova customer so again I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you got something out of it thank you and take care bye